Hey folks, welcome back to my channel. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you guys how can you get the data from your web URL into Power BI by using Power Query, right? So what you see on the screen is basically the COVID-19 data from the GitHub, right? So this data is being daily uh, updated. So every day there is a drop of uh, CSV file into this uh, location. You see, it goes all the way until yesterday, right? 7-18-2020. So I wanted to read, uh, go to this website, read all of this data, right? And then I wanted to stack all of this data together into one entity or one table within Power BI, right? How do I do that? Uh, so first I'll open this one CSV file. You can see what's going on behind that. So you see, if I open the CSV file, it shows all of these values uh, contained within the CSV, uh, province, state, country, last update, latitude, longitude, confirmed cases, deaths, recovered cases, active, uh, different other pieces, uh, whatever we wanted to, uh, you know, report. Uh, if you also click on the raw, this shows the uh, comma separated values, right? So basically I wanted this, I'm interested in this data here. So the power query has to go into this location, right? That's step number one, right? And it has to uh, copy all of this information, right? And then make it as a table, right? And that has to be continued for all of these files here, right? So each and every file it has to go there into the raw data, copy all of these files, stack them one above the other, or sorry, one below the other, or uh, however it is, right? So um, that's what I need. So uh, step number one is to basically uh, to copy this data, copy this uh, URL that you have here, right? Let's copy this URL, right? So that's uh, source link URL that's the first step so the second step is to open power bi so here I'll just go to get data get data from the web uh, and then whatever I copied before I need to paste it here right that's the home URL for where all of my data is located right so now it's gonna load up uh, uh, three different tables but uh, they are not the data tables right so you see here, these are not data tables. What you see here is basically, uh, you know, the it's basically scraping this data from here. See, whatever is uh, here, it's just uh, you know forming it as a table. That's what uh, you have here, right? Uh, likewise, there is table two that shows you know different links, and uh, we don't need uh, any of these texts, right? So table three it has other again you know these uh, uh, file names, description, and uh, when updated. All that I'm interested here is basically the column one, which shows all of the file name, right? So I'll select that, transform data. Uh, one thing to notice, anytime you work with Power BI or Power Query, you always have to transform data before loading it, right? You just wanna make sure what data you're loading for reporting, right? You just wanna make sure a check or doing some transformation before you load the data so that you load the right data into your uh, visuals. So here, as I mentioned, I just want the first column, which has only the file names, uh, because uh, uh, I'm going to, uh, uh, before that, I'm just going to remove all of these other columns. What uh, all that I'm going to do next step is basically to build that URL, right? The raw URL that we saw before. I just wanted to go here and then go here. I wanted to uh, build this URL. You see? The interesting thing about this URL is basically, right, so right now you see here, there is raw, GitHub, user content, uh, different, uh, goes to different folders, and then there is a file name here. So if I go to a different file name, right, different file, let's say, you know what, let's choose 416, just in case, uh, only the last uh, file name is changed, everything else remains the same, this is a constant, right, so this is a variable. So I'm going to take this whole, uh, uh, the text of this uh, URL, right? I'm going to make this uh, as a dynamic uh, string builder. I'm going to build the string dynamically, basically. So I'll go to add columns, custom column. Let's call it as a URL, URL. And when I go here, I'm going to uh, copy this and then concatenate that, right? With all of these file names. So each and every line will have the URL for that specific file. For, so for example, 412 will have the URL for that, 413 will have the URL for that specific file likewise. Uh, I'll just go here and then say 
column one right hit okay right now okay so what you have here is the uh, full url for all of these different files right so this is not again we are just uh, the next step is where you're going to actually build data for that you need two important uh, uh, power query uh, functions so what are those so custom column again right let's call it as a table right here i wanted to go to each of these url right and get the contents from the web right that's the thing and then there is a function call web contents right how easy is that to uh, keep in mind and then i'm going to pass this url this column as a parameter into that function right so now what it's going to give us is the binary right this is going to have the data right you see this is going to have the data but i am going to make it as a table right so i'm going to go back uh, where is that where is this one? i don't i i i'm going to delete all of these steps because as soon as i hit that binary all of these steps get automatically added likewise uh, whatever uh, i uh, whatever uh, steps that I do within my power query it's gonna add an extra step here right so if I delete something it's gonna go back to the previous step wherever uh, it didn't work uh, I have a couple of more steps after this to get the full data but before that I just wanted to show you guys something else so if I when I go to this uh, uh, website what I found here is at the last you see there is a readme kind of readme.md like a, you know unwanted file that's uh, we don't want that here right so there is that file here i wanted to remove that uh, so i'm gonna go filter it out from my data load so i'll just go here I'll just search for readme right filter it out uh, in fact you know the right way to do that is right after uh, you load the data you, you might as well filter it out i think that's the better way to do it so let's filter it out right and then you see nothing breaks it's all just uh, it's all going to you know layer over uh, on top of you know other step as far as there is no dependency between these steps it's not going to break uh, if there is a dependency uh, between the step number two and step number three and then if you remove the step number two then the step number three is going to break obviously right because step number three is going to expect the data from or the changes from step number two uh, all right so let's come back to the last uh, but before step actually so if i go here i have the web contents uh, unloaded here now i need to make it like a table now it is just a binary content here now i need to make it like a table content so there is another function called csv dot document i'm gonna you know uh, sorry i'm going to actually make use of that so I'm going to pass this web contents URL, the previous function that we used, which is going to result as a binary value as a parameter into the CSV document function, right? So CSV document, what it needs, what it's going to do is basically return the contents of the CSV document as a table, right? So let's hit OK. And then here comes a beauty. So it's all now converted as a table. So you see uh, there's a button here. Uh, if I hit that button is when the magic is gonna happen uh, again I just wanted to load more uh, I don't want to use original column name as a prefix hit ok and there you go so all of this data whatever you see on the website is been stacked up here you see 412 data is all the way here all the way here and then uh, it stops here at 61 and 413 begins and this is all the data from 413 but if you see here uh, we have the headers here you see for each and every time it's getting the data it's also loading the headers so I can easily remove these headers uh, I have an idea for that so use first row's headers I'm gonna make it uh, make that and then I might need to filter out uh, the province state from the other files you see now just the first row has been made as a header right so I might still have the province state and all of those columns in the previous in the other uh, rows as well you see this uh, column the column name is uh, also here so I'm, I'm gonna manually filter it out so let's go here and then filter that out 
right that's gonna filter the whole all the column names from all of the tables so now if I go here uh, again to call um, you know 60 or something see it's all gone right so I have the cleaned up data right here right so so that's what uh, that's how you load the data guys so the next step is basically you can you know the next step is basically to go to your uh, close and apply and it's gonna load the data into your power bi as a table all right guys so that's how you load the data into your power bi from a web url for uh, if you can visualize this data you can play around with that uh, if you wanted to uh, if you're new to power bi watch the previous video in which i show you how to uh, build your dashboard right uh, with which you can get some experience to you know uh, build a covid 19 dashboard that you would like to present right so thank you very much for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video any comments that you have in this video just comment it out in this video itself and if you like this video subscribe and then um, you know, hit the like button as well thank you